First question is from Ms. Adams224. Why is it so hard for people to stick to their health and fitness goals? Oh, mm. uh, because they're goals. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's true. It, Dis disciplines. It, because it's goals, and, be, and how do we get to our goals? The way we get to goals is through discipline and willpower. There's nothing wrong with those two things. But when it comes to health and fitness, going off of willpower, you will fail at some point because willpower just doesn't last all the time. Yeah. The people who stick to their health and fitness, quote unquote, goals are people who it's, it's, it's a part of their lifestyle. It's not a goal. It's not like, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. And then what do I do when I lose this willpower? What do I do when I lose this discipline? What do I do when I become weak? It's a different relationship with uh, nutrition and exercise. I also think it's, I think it's the way we set our goals. Like I think we set such lofty, extreme goals. And they've, I read an article a, a long time ago that referenced this with just like success or period or telling your kids like, you can be anything you want to be, mm -hmm. you know, if, and it's, there's, a lot. Of, there's a, a lie. lie. It is a lie. <laughs> it's That's, totally a lie. But how long have we heard that? And it's been, it's been passed along. Said like it's not true. And the same thing to be said about people that set fitness goals. They set very unrealistic goals to set off, start off. And it's like, why would you do that when there's so many steps uh, before that that are great goals? Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that took years, probably a decade of of training clients before I really pieced this together. And that was client comes in and and you know they're you know, morbidly obese, super overweight, 100 pounds plus overweight, and they have this image or they watch The Biggest Loser. And so they're like, oh, I want to be here. And mm -hmm. it's this huge goal. And I know, to your point, Sal, that if this is going to be a lifelong behavior, that I can't just push them to that goal. I've got to give them the tools and I got to slowly give them, like you give them a tool and you practice that tool for a while and you get good at using it. Then you give them another tool, you practice with that tool, you get good at it. And over time, you eventually have all these these tools in your tool belt that you can you can use at your disposal to make this a long-term successful journey for yourself where right now, I think when it's the beginning of the year, a lot of people overshoot these lofty goals and they end up getting burnout. Totally. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're basically developing these micro habits that, that build up confidence. And, and these confidence, like once once they feel like they've accomplished like one thing, that's something they can build upon and, and then they find enjoyment in that. I think that a lot of times like we need to really find enjoyment, uh, you know, in, in self-improvement and finding like a way to make that happen because then it's like it can become a lifestyle thing. It's not going to become a lifestyle thing begrudgingly. Right. And, and I think that that's, that's a mistake. Mistake, uh, a lot of people make it's like I, I have to beat myself up to get to a certain place but you know yeah there's struggle of course there's struggle but you know you finding uh enjoyment in in a portion of that is everything it's all in how you approach it it really is so if you're going into this thinking uh, i want to look this way I, I have this this fitness goal i want to lose this much weight um if, and you don't have long-term permanent behaviors already set around fitness and health the odds that you fail are astronomically high. Astronomical. I would say 9 out of 10 of you uh, listening right now, if you approach it that way, long term, you're going to fail. Instead, try approaching it this way. Say to yourself, okay, I'm going to make permanent lifestyle changes. Now, why does that make a big difference? Because you're going to approach it completely different. If I walk into a gym for the first time in years or ever, and I say to myself, I'm going to make permanent lifestyle changes, I'm going to start slow. I am because I, now I know this is going to be forever. So I'm going to go into the gym and be like, well, I'm working out zero days a week and I'm going to do something that I'm going to do forever. I think I'm going to start once a week. Right. Let me start once a week and see what that looks like. Or I'm going to change my, I got to you know get better with my nutrition, but I got to do it in a permanent way. And nutrition, by the way, is a harder, harder one to change than, yeah. than exercise because nutrition is just, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of culture. It's, it's, culture, a, part, yeah, everything. it's a part of everything that you pretty much do. Think, you know, Culture and society surrounds itself and, and circulates around food. So when you think to yourself, I'm going to change how I eat, that's a massive, massive change. Now add to the sentence, I'm going to change how I eat forever. Oh boy, let's start slow. Changing anything forever makes you want to start slow. So you think, okay, I'm going to do this forever. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to eat you know, a, a serving of vegetables twice a week because I don't eat any at all right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that for a while. Then when it becomes a part of your permanent life, then you add the next change. And now if you're listening and you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's just going to take too long. That sounds like I'm, I'm motivated right now. Remember this, okay? Permanence is much better than temporary, okay? So will it take you longer? Yeah, but you'll keep it. 
There's nothing worse than getting somewhere and getting out of somewhere. And um, losing it. Oh, that's a that's a terrible uh, position to be in. And it doesn't take as long as you think. Look, I've used this uh, example many, many times, uh, and I like the way it illustrates uh, what we're talking about. If you took two parallel lines and I adjusted one a fraction of a degree to the left, that's it, just a fraction of a degree, looking at it initially doesn't even look like, it looks like they're still parallel. Follow those lines. The further along, you, the further you follow those lines, the further apart they become, the more they diverge. So this is what ends up happening when you approach this with that particular mentality. It starts off slow for sure, but trust me, over the course of just a year or two, you make some fundamental changes that won't go away. The, the irony of this, this doesn't change just because you're more advanced or you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we just talked earlier in the episode of how we start uh, after coming back from vacation. Like right. That. You know, this is uh, two weeks I did not lift and eat really well. Two weeks. It's probably the longest in a very long time, uh, probably since my injury, where I actually had two solid weeks off and not eating very well. And I'm coming back. Now, two weeks for a lot of people isn't that long time. Many people have taken months off over the entire holidays. And yet I still will come back very, very slow. So what it'll look like this week is starting off with a fast. And then again, like I said, I'm not going to go hardcore dieting anything. It's just I'm going to get rid of the stuff I know doesn't belong in my diet and make a conscious effort to make a, a better balanced meals. That And then maybe get in the gym two or three times this week. That in itself will already set me up in the right direction and it's not too much to commit. And it falls in line with what I'm always constantly saying on the show, which is I'm always trying to do the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change. And when you haven't been doing anything for several weeks, eating wise, healthy and or exercise, it doesn't take very much for the body to respond and start seeing some change. Right. And in, in going through this process from a permanence uh, mentality, a lifestyle, a forever, go into it and think to yourself, can I do the changes I'm going to do right now? Can I keep them forever? And you got to be honest with yourself. Okay. Remember, you're, you're, you're coming from a motivated standpoint which means that you're not going to be motivated at other times. So ask yourself, because right now you might be motivated. You might be super motivated, like a lot of people in January. So ask yourself, so, okay, can I do this forever? And can I keep this up when I'm not motivated? I know I'm motivated right now and I'm excited, but am I going to be able to keep this up when I'm not motivated? So you have to be very honest. And that may look like a very small change. It literally may look like, and I've started many clients who've achieved lifelong permanent success as long as I've known them. I've started a lot of them with once a week once a week in the gym. And I've actually convinced people. People have come up, come to hire me, have not worked out for 10 years or longer, or whatever. And they've said to me, I want to start working out with you three days a week. And I've actually convinced them and said, actually, let's start once a week. Let's do that for now. And we have this big talk, like just like I'm doing right now on the podcast. And those people accomplished phenomenal things. So be very honest with yourself. What can you do forever? Now, what does this do for you? Well, over time, you will value health and fitness uh, you would truly value it in, in different ways. Now, what does that mean? That means that when you value health and fitness in a real way, you do it even when you don't enjoy it. Okay, that's an important thing to understand. When you're motivated and having fun, nobody has to convince you to exercise and eat right. When you're having a good time and you're super motivated, you don't need, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs help when they're motivated. When people need the help is when they lose motivation, like we all do. When they lose the enjoyment factor, you know, waking up, you don't feel like moving, you'd rather watch TV, you'd rather eat, you know, junk food, you, you're stressed out or whatever. That's the times when the true value comes out. So when you build these lifestyle, these lifelong habits slowly over time, you value it to the point where, you know, when I go through hard times in my life, I don't go to the gym to work out to get stronger and have fun. I use it as a way to relieve stress. I use it as a way to make myself feel better. When I'm stressed out uh, and anxious and I want to you know, eat, reach for a piece of cake, I actually value my health and fitness to the point where I know my anxieties actually do better long term if I eat healthy. And so that's, when you, that's how you accomplish that, that permanent. So the, ma the reason why it's so hard for people is they're going in with goals and it's about motivated, motivation and inspiration. That is 100% uh, a road to uh, failure in the long term. Burnout. 